Hi everyone, it's Bryony. Welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be talking about cloth nappies. Recently the subject of cloth nappies has been coming up more and more amongst a few of my mum groups, particularly now that some of our babies have got a bit older, they're no longer newborns, people are feeling a bit more confident and starting to think maybe they could look at trying them, but are feeling a bit lost about the number of different types available and where to start all of that jazz. And it made me realize that over the years, I've done a number of videos talking about cloth nappies, and in particular, showing you my cloth nappy stash, but I don't think I've ever really delved deeper into the different types and the pros and cons to using them, the ways you can wash them, troubleshooting, etc. So I thought now would be a good time to start a little mini series on cloth nappies, to hopefully give you guys some more information about them and help you get started on your own cloth nappy journeys. So I'm gonna turn this into a bit of a mini series. Today's video, I'm going to focus more on the different types of cloth nappies, and then I'm also planning to do a video talking about how to wash them and also some troubleshooting tips for if you're having any issues with leaking etc. Before we get into the video though if you're not familiar with me I have a five month old biological son called Oren and prior to having him I was a foster carer and I looked after a number of babies both boys and girls so I have used cloth nappies on quite a few different children and I've had a good amount of time to experiment with different types and find what I like and what I don't. So the advice I'm going to give in this video is based purely off my own personal experience and hopefully it'll be helpful to you. Let's get started. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the five main different types of cloth nappy options available to you and talk about the little pros and cons to each of them so that you can hopefully make a decision about what will be right for your family. I'm also gonna talk a little bit about the different types of fastenings available on cloth nappies and a little bit about the different sizing options available to you too. So let's start with the all-in-one style of cloth nappy. Here I have an example of an all-in-one cloth nappy. This is a Bum Genius Elemental. This is personally one of my favorite type of cloth nappies because it's so absorbent. An all-in-one cloth nappy means that the absorbent layer is sewn into the nappy. It doesn't come apart. Um, so no matter what you do, it, it won't separate out. Not all all-in-one nappies look like this particular style. They have different ways. Even Bum Genius do different types of all-in-one cloth nappy. But the main thing about them is that they don't come apart. Everything is sewn in as you need. So you're not gonna have different inserts in the washing machine from the cover. It all stays in one piece. The main advantage to using an all-in-one cloth nappy is that they're very easy to use and they tend to not confuse people too much who are using them because everything's sewn in there. With this one, it has this slightly longer tongue you can see here and basically you just fold this up where you need more absorbency so if you have a boy you might fold more at the front if you have a girl you might fold more absorbency in the middle depends on where they tend to wet um, boys generally speaking tend to wet more at the front and I have a son so mine tends to be folded up here but it could also be like a long tongue insert that's sewn in at the top as well so there's different ways for them to be all-in-one cloth nappies but the main thing about an all-in-one is that it's all sewn together and it doesn't come apart the main downsides to using an all-in-one cloth nappy is they tend to be more expensive to use because obviously whenever you change the nappy you have to change the whole nappy and some of the other systems I will show you you don't need to do that and the other thing is they take a little bit longer to dry oftentimes um, this nappy in particular is a cotton fleece style and um, there are different fabrics that you can choose from bamboo is a great fabric for absorbency but it does take longer to dry and so if you have an all-in-one that's bamboo you're gonna find that's gonna take quite a bit longer to dry out so it is partly dependent on what the absorbent material is inside the nappy too. But generally speaking, because if you've got like all in one sewn together and there's lots of layers, that takes longer to dry out just because they've got to dry through all those layers together. But I do really like all in one cloth nappies just because of their ease of use. So I would say if you're starting out with cloth, it is worth getting one or two to try out. The next style of nappy I'm going to talk about are all in twos. Now all in twos are actually kind of similar to the all in one style, except for one main difference, the inner absorbency tends to pop her out. There's different ways that they go in. Some of them just lie in there, but most often they tend to pop her in, but the absorbent core separates from the waterproof shell. That's the main difference between an all-in-one and an all-in-two. Now the nappy I'm using here to demonstrate today is a Bambooty Basics. Unfortunately, I don't think these are available anymore in the UK, but I think they are still available in Australia. I'm not 100% on that one, but they are, it, I'm really sad about it because they are one of my favorite nappies to use. They're really easy. The outside fabric is like a waterproof minky, which is a really soft fabric. So the elastic's really nice on their, their legs and everything. So I do really like this nappy. So if you are in Australia 
worth having a look into them. You also have a different choice of core fabrics to use. You can go for this one here is I believe the microfiber or the cotton terry and they also have a bamboo option as well. I have both. I have to say I'm surprised because I thought I'd like the bamboo more because it's really absorbent but currently with Orin the um, microfiber slash cotton terry is working better because it's a little bit more um, moldable to his body. But with this style of all in two you can see it's got a really long tongue and what you do is you just fold it up however you want to. So if you have a girl you probably just fold it in half like this. With Orin, as I said before, obviously he's a boy, so I tend to roll the absorbency more up at the front of the nappy so that he's got more to wee on at the front here. So the advantages of using an all in two nappy is that generally speaking, because the absorbent core comes out and you can dry them separately, they tend to dry a little bit faster. And also some all in two nappy styles have a waterproof cover that is wipe clean. And if that's the case, if you have just a wet nappy um, or you change it and the insert is just a little bit wet, you can actually just take a wipe and wipe out this cover and you can put the insert in your wet bag and get a new insert and use the same cover or you can let this one air dry and switch for another one but it can mean that you don't need to buy as many covers as you do absorbent cores. The times where you would not do that is if you get a nappy that's dirty, if you get a pooey nappy then you would always put the whole thing in the wash, you never wipe out a pooey nappy but if you've got a wet one you can sometimes wipe them clean. This particular style has a suede cloth lining, it's not wipe clean so you can't do it with that but it does dry pretty quickly and that's one of the benefits of using an all in two because the absorbent core can be separated, they do tend to dry a bit quicker. Like with the all in one style, there's many different ways you can have an all in two, they don't all look like this, some of them open up like a trifold style, so there's many different ways they can work. But the main thing about an all-in-two nappy is that it separates into two parts, hence the reason it's called an all-in two. The main disadvantage to using an all-in-two nappy is that because they separate out, you then need to match them up back together when the nappies have been washed and are dry. So it can be a little bit more of a faff to do that. Uh, I personally don't find it that much of a deal to do it, but it is just something to bear in mind. That tends to be the main downside of an all-in-two nappy. The next type of cloth nappy we're going to talk about are pocket nappies. Now I have to confess, I personally hate pocket nappies, so I don't actually own any of them. However, I do have one um, all-in-one style cloth nappy which has a pocket opening at the back that you can use to add extra absorbency, so I'm going to use that to demonstrate for you today. So pocket nappies and all-in-two nappies are kind of similar in the sense that they both have a shell and an absorbent core. However, where with an all-in-two the absorbency tends to pop into on the top of the nappy, with a pocket nappy you take the absorbent core and you stuff it into the nappy itself. So there will typically be a fleece lining on the inside and a waterproof lining on the outside. And what you'll do is you'll get one or two inserts with the nappy when you buy it. And the way you use them is you hold them like this, you find the opening and you basically just stuff it in there. Once you've got your absorbent core inside your nappy, you basically just wanna kind of make sure it's lying flat. You fold it up and then you're ready to go and you're ready to use it. The advantages of using a pocket nappy are that, first of all, there's a lot of brands available and there tend to be more budget-friendly cloth nappies available that are pocket style. So they are quite often one of the first cloth nappies that people will use. One of the advantages to using a pocket nappy is they tend to be lined fully with fleece like this one is here. This one has some absorbency sewn in the core here because it's technically an all-in-one with a pocket opening. Um, but a pocket nappy won't have anything sewn in, it'll just literally be fleece and the waterproof on the back. Um, the advantages to that are because it's fleece lining you don't actually have to use any kind of liner with it. If you're choosing to use fleece liners with your nappies as opposed to disposable, I'll cover a little bit more about that at the end, um, then you don't need to use anything else with a pocket nappy with a fleece liner, you just literally pop it on and you're good to go. Another benefit of a pocket nappy is because the absorbency is all hidden on the inside and it's just fleece here, they tend to be very easy to use. So if you've got somebody who doesn't feel as confident using cloth nappies or a partner that's not sure about it, Pocket nappies can be a really good option there because all they need to do is put them on and fasten them around. They haven't got to faff about with any of these like inner tongues being rolled up or anything like that like you have with the all-in-twos or some of the all-in-ones. It's just all ready to go like this so it can be quite an easy nappy for someone that's less confident to use. The downsides of a pocket nappy are when you've finished using them you do really need to pull out the stuffing, the inserts in the core 
and pop it in the wet bag like this in order for this absorbency to be properly washed. Because the fleece is water resistant, um, sometimes it, well, it basically it won't wash properly if this is stuck inside, they won't tend to come out on their own. So you do need to pull these absorbent cores out. And then just like with the all in twos, once these are dry, you then need to restuff them again. But I find stuffing nappies to be a bit more of a hassle than just popping them back in with the all in twos, which is the main reason that I don't like using pockets because I just find them a bit more work in terms of obviously having to pull out the insert, which has of course got like wee on it and everything uh, when it's used and also having to stuff it at the end as well. So that's the reason I personally don't like them, but they are a really great option for people just starting out if you wanna get sent to cloth nappies because they're probably one of the most easily available cloth nappies out there. Pockets are really popular and that sort of ease of use as well. And the other benefit to them too is that you can stuff them with as much or as little as you want. So if you've got a heavy wetter, you can just grab another insert and double them up and stick them in as well. So if you find you need more absorbency, you can add more. If you find you need less, you can take it away. So it's a bit adjustable as well. So those are pocket nappies. This, by the way, is an unbranded cloth nappy. It was sent to me as like a China cheapie by the factory when they were trying to persuade me to look into potentially selling them. Uh, I never got any further, but I've kept the nappy and it's actually worked quite well, but it's not a proper pocket, but I've used it to demonstrate pockets for the purpose of this video. The next two cloth nappies I'm gonna talk about are part of a two-part system, which means you need to use them with a waterproof cover as well. First one we're gonna talk about are fitted cloth nappies. So a fitted cloth nappy looks like this. This is a Tot Spots Bamboozle. It's probably one of the most popular fitted out there and it works really well. A fitted cloth nappy is basically a nappy that is made entirely of absorbent fabric. So it has, in this case, a booster on the inside and then this whole nappy is made of absorbent bamboo terry. The advantages to using a fitted is that they are very absorbent. They are excellent night nappies, particularly when you have babies that start to sleep longer stretches of night or if you have a baby that sleeps through the night. Using a fitted is a really great option because the whole nappy is absorbent and therefore can hold a lot of wee. Because the nappy itself is completely absorbent, there's no waterproofing on it, so you do need to use them with a cover, kind of similar to how the all-in twos work. If you have a cover like this that is wipe clean on the inside, if you have a fitted that's just wet, you can actually just literally wipe the cover out, hang it over the side of the cot or somewhere and use another one and then you only need to alternate between two wraps. So you don't need as many of these waterproof wraps as you do of the fitted nappies. Another advantage of using a fitted cloth nappy is that they are practically bomb proof. So because the absorbent fabric is elasticated as well and you're putting a waterproof cover over the top, which also has elastic around the legs, it's virtually impossible for the children to poo out of these. So the chance of getting a poonami with a nappy like this is very, very slim, unless they've got a really upset stomach. And even in those cases, like you're probably gonna be all right with this. You're pretty good with this nappy. They are they are bomb proof. One of the downsides to using fitted cloth nappies is that they do tend to be a bit more expensive to use because um, you need to buy obviously a good stash of this, plus you need to buy the covers as well. Although you don't need as many covers as you do fitted, you're still gonna need, I'd say at least four or five, just in case you get a run of um, pooey nappies. Like with the all in twos, if you get a pooey nappy like this, you need to put the whole thing in the nappy, um, the wet bag. But if you only have a wet nappy, you can just wipe this out and leave it to air dry and switch between two until you get a pooey one. In which case, like I said, put the whole thing in the wet bag and grab a new cover out. So you don't need as many covers as you do with the fitted, but it still does add up. The other drawback with using a fitted is that they do tend to take longer to dry, a bit like the all-in-ones, because this whole thing is absorbent even though you can take the um, extra absorbency in this particular nappy out. This one in particular is bamboo, which is super absorbent, so great for heavy wetters. Um, it's still gonna take a while to dry, so you just need to be aware of that. I do think that everyone starting out with cloth nappies, however, should get at least one fitted and one cover to try, particularly if you're looking to try cloth nappies overnight because they are just so absorbent. And even if you find that this on its own isn't enough absorbency, you can usually add some extra either on the outside or stick it on the inside, absorbent core boosters, and that can add extra absorbency. But generally speaking, these are really absorbent and they're gonna be great if you've got a very heavy wetter, or if you think you're gonna be in a situation where you're not gonna be able to 
change nappy for quite some time, let's say you're doing a longer car journey, this could be a good option for you there too. And the final type of cloth nappy I'm going to talk about today are prefolds. Now prefolds are one of the most affordable ways of using cloth nappies. Prefold nappies look like this, they're basically a square of material, there's different types of materials they can be made from, this one is a homemade one I made myself from some bamboo fleece, um, but they tend to be made from like layers of muslin that are all sewn together, and the way that they work is they're very adjustable in how you can use them, so you can fold them up into say a trifold like this, this is basically just folded into three, and you can stick it in a nappy shell, just like with the fitted, the prefold has to be used with a waterproof cover, this is why it's part of a two part system, but you can stick it in the cover like so, and then I would typically use a fleece liner like this one, um, stick that on as well, and then you just pop that on the baby with the cover over the top. They can also be used with something called a snappy. There are a number of different ways to fold a prefold, but if you take the trifold like this and you open up the top edges of it like so, you can actually make it into a sort of nappy shape like this, and in which case you use a snappy to basically grab the material like that, and it holds it in a nappy shape. This is probably quite a bad example. But this is quite a popular way to use a prefold nappy. One of the big advantages of using prefolds is that they are one of the cheapest ways to use cloth nappies. You can buy these uh, in packs and that means you get a number of nappies all at once and then you just need to buy the covers separately. But like I said with the fitteds, you only need a few covers whereas you need more absorbent cores like the prefolds. Another pro for the prefolds is that they are very adaptable. There's many different ways you can fold these and pop them on a baby. I'm not going to show you all the specifics in this video uh, because there are so many different ways and like I showed you, you can use them with this thing called a snappy. You don't have to, you can just fold them into a trifold like this and because you've got three absorbent cores sewn together, they are also very absorbent. Another pro to using the prefolds is that because they unfold like this, they don't take as long to dry as some of the more structured cloth nappies. So not only are they quite an affordable way to get started with cloth nappies, but they also don't have a particularly long drying time, unlike some of the others. The main downside of using a prefold is that it's not as easy to use as some of the other types of cloth nappies, because obviously you've got to make sure it's folded, and then you'll need your liner on the top, not all, um, the other types of nappies need a liner, some of them come with it sewn on the top, and then you need to pair it with a cover as well. It's just not as intuitive as some of the others, um, so if you've got someone that's not as confident using cloth nappies or isn't really sure what they're doing, they might struggle a bit more with the prefold system, and of course if you're using a snappy to create that sort of fastened look that I showed you earlier where you've got the wings that you have to pull out like this and then you need to pull the front up and pull these edges round and then get this clipped on. It just, it's not going to be something that someone that's not confident is going to be able to use. You also need to be aware that there are different types of materials that can be used to make prefolds. So some prefolds are more absorbent than others. So be sure to read the reviews when you are choosing a prefold if you're going for it, because if you buy one that's not that absorbent, you might find that even if you're folding them into a trifold like this and putting them in a nappy, that actually that's not enough absorbency and you might end up boosting it because it's not enough on its own. So make sure that you are paying attention to the material that's used. Generally speaking, going for a bamboo or a hemp style of prefold is going to be more absorbent and probably going to be a good option for you. I do think the prefolds are a little bit underrated because they are so flexible and can do so many things that generally speaking uh, it's worth giving them a go. They can also be a really great stash booster, so if you can't afford to buy a ton of all-in-ones, all-in-twos if this is your favourite type, if you've got a few covers it might be worth investing in a pack of prefolds because if you buy say a five pack that might be enough to do you almost a full day's worth of cloth nappying, um, or even like half a day, but just adds to your um, ability to use cloth nappies, so you can have more cloth nappies available to you um, for a cheaper price than having an all, all-in-one or all-in-two style stash. So those are the five main types of cloth nappy options available to you when you're considering switching to cloth nappies. The next thing you need to consider is the type of fastening you want to use. Now aside from the snappy which I showed you before, most cloth nappies come with two options and that is poppers or Velcro. So the main pros to Velcro and poppers are with Velcro it's easier to use and with poppers they last longer. Those are the main reasons why people choose either Velcro or poppers. Going on to Velcro, um, if you've got somebody who is not very confident using cloth nappies or if you yourself are not very confident about getting a good fit with a cloth nappy, Velcro is a great option to go for because it is just so adjustable. 
um, you can get exactly the fit around the waist uh, that you want with your child and so it's really easy for that. The downsides to using Velcro are when you take it off you must remember to fold the tab over like this to its wash tab otherwise when this is in the washing machine these tabs are going to catch on everything and you're going to end up with all your nappies kind of clumped together all stuck together with their Velcro which is not fun to pull apart. The other downside to Velcro is that it tends not to last as long as the poppers because obviously you've constantly got this kind of attaching, unattaching, attaching, unattaching and so over time the Velcro will wear down and become um, less sticky but in terms of ease of use Velcro is definitely got the pro there. Poppers on the other hand have the advantage of lasting longer because undoing and closing and opening poppers doesn't have the same wear as the Velcro does. Um, the disadvantage of is, is it can be a little bit more complicated to use. Some people are really put off by these rows of poppers, particularly if, like this one, you have a one size style of cloth nappy where the rise is adjustable. You can see there's tons of poppers now and that can be really off-putting to some people. The best thing to do is to remember that there are two sections. You have the two rows of poppers across the front that adjust the waist width and you have the three rows typically of poppers along the base here and these are separate sections. This adjusts the length of the nappy and the rise so it makes it smaller for a smaller baby. You'll typically find that there are three uh, snaps across the front here. Sometimes there's just two but often there's three and you basically take the poppers down below, you choose which setting you want it. If you want it really small, you choose the furthest away. If you want it just a little bit shorter, you choose the next one up. But you take that bottom popper, if you're making it as small as possible, snap it onto the male snap up here, and you do the same for the other three. And there you can see the nappy has now been made shorter and will fit a smaller baby. You can see now it's folded up much smaller and will typically fit a baby from around eight weeks onwards. Velcro nappies often will have this same popper style rise on them, but because you've got Velcro along the top, it's easier to see the difference between the two. So it's just something to, um, that's worth considering when you're trying to think about which one you might want to use. Velcro, a little bit easier to use, but to be honest, once you've got to grips with poppers, they're also pretty simple to use too. And then quickly covering sizing. Most cloth nappies these days come in at one size fits all. It's not quite one size fits all. Most one size fits all nappies will not fit a newborn unless you have a very chunky newborn. But generally speaking, from around eight weeks onwards, they should fit most babies. And that is just the three rise snap setting I just showed you here on this nappy. It basically means you can make the nappy longer or shorter depending on how you popper these up. Some nappy brands, however, offer size nappies, tot spots in particular. Um, although these ones do have some poppers on them, they offer a size one and a size two, or some brands might offer a size A and a size B. The pros and cons to these are obviously with a one size nappy, you only have to buy one nappy and it should last you the majority of your child's time in nappies. Um, however, when it's on the smaller settings, it can be a little bit more bulky and some people don't like that extra bulk with the cloth nappies. So that's where size nappies might be more up your street. Because they are more sized for particular ages, they will tend to be a little bit less bulky and be a little bit more trim when they're actually on the baby. They might also be easier for using because some of them have these poppers like this um, bam top of box bamboozle one here does but some of them don't some of them have no poppers at all so it makes it a little bit easier if you're a bit unsure about how the poppers might work they also generally tend to have a better fit at each of the stages so when you've got a smaller baby you'll have a more trim nappy that fits when you've got a bigger baby you might get a size large and that will fit them better than say a one size which might be kind of eked out on the edges here uh, or might be a little bit short in the rise as well depending on the type of nappy because different nappies are made differently some of them are shorter some of them are longer every nappy brand does it differently so sizing has the pro of fitting better but then of course the con of you've got to buy each size individually so adds to the cost I've used a few of each to be honest and I have to say I don't have any issues with the one sizes usually. Yes they are a little bit bulky in the early stages but I find that for most babies they're out of all these popper rises by about six months. So realistically by that point a one size fits all nappy is going to be a bit like a sized one anyway. You may find that the size nappies work better for you with fitted, particularly if you're using them at night because sometimes they change the absorbency based on the size of the nappy and so you can get a more absorbent one as they get bigger for example or a slightly less absorbent one when they're little. Um, or they just fit a bit less bulkily under the nappy wrap because these can be quite bulky but generally speaking I think with the um, 
all in ones or the all in twos, the one size fits all nappy is a pretty good option to go for. And the final thing I'm gonna to touch on today are cloth nappy liners. When you use cloth nappies, you generally have two options. You can use a fleece liner or a disposable liner. I personally don't use disposable liners, so I don't have any here to show you, but they're basically like a very thin um, lining that you place on the inside of a cloth nappy and instead of washing it like you would with the fleece one you just throw it away. You will need to use some kind of liner most of the time that you use a cloth nappy but you don't always need to. So for example if you have a nappy like this um, bambooty one that I have here which has what's called a suede cloth lining so it's either fleece on the lining or it's suede cloth like this it's a stay dry fabric that keeps their skin dry and you have a breastfed baby a fully breastfed baby not one that's been weaned then you don't actually need to use any kind of lining at all because breastfed poo is completely water soluble when they poo in the nappy you just take it off and you put the whole thing in the wet bag you don't need to do anything else so before a baby starts weaning if they're breastfed and actually some formula fed babies i have to say i found have been fine too if their poos are pretty runny um, and if you've got a breastfed baby who's topped up with a little bit of formula, it's usually okay as well. Uh, you don't need to use any kind of liner until they start to wean and their poos become more solid. You do, however, need to use a liner with a um, breastfed baby if they don't have that lining. So for example, uh, this fitted nappy that I have here, this is all just absorbent fabric, so it's just going to be quite wet against their skin. So I find that using a fleece liner like this is a great option because fleece is water resistant so the water will wick through it and then it will keep them feeling dry here so it's a great option to have fleece liners for that too so before weaning if you've got a nappy with a stay dry inside you don't need to worry about using a liner however after weaning or with any nappy that doesn't have that stay dry fabric you do need to think about what kind of liner you want to use so pros and cons to using a disposable versus a reusable liner i don't have any disposables like i said so i'm going to pretend that this uh, white reusable liner is a disposable for the purpose of this video so let's say you've got a disposable liner in your nappy the pros to using that are that when you have a more solid poo all you have to do is pick the liner up and flush it down the toilet they're usually flushable I'm a little bit skeptical on that, so I would probably personally throw it away in a nappy bin if you have one, if you use a mixture of cloth and disposable, or find some other way to dispose of it, but they do say they're flushable, so. Hmm. But you don't need to do anything other than get rid of this and then put the rest of the nappy in the wet bag. With a reusable fleece liner like this one, it's laid in the nappy in exactly the same way, but instead of throwing it away, what you will typically do is go to the toilet and either shake it over, or if you have a bidet, you can use that to kind of wash off any of the poo into the toilet, and then you put the rest of the nappy into your wet bag. Once again, it's a personal preference thing. Obviously with fleece liners, because these are washed and reused, once you've got them, you don't need to buy any more, so you're set disposables you would need to keep buying the rolls of them if you're using them it's a personal thing entirely up to you go with what works best for you but hopefully that has covered the basics of everything you need to know about the different types of cloth nappies and some of the things that you might want to think about before you get started. If you are looking for a cheaper way to get started with cloth nappies, I can highly recommend checking out Vinted because they often sell nappies really cheaply secondhand on there and you can grab some really great bargains, sometimes nappies that are brand new or sometimes nappies that have been used but are in really good condition. And of course, you're going to stick these in the washing machine anyway, so just stick them in there on a hot wash at 60 degrees and then hang them outside to dry. Obviously, using secondhand cloth nappies is not for everyone. I personally am happy to do it because I know how to clean them really well and so I'm very comfortable with that and they're a great way to boost your stash as well if you've bought a few that you found you liked and you just want to stick with that one brand and bulk up on those. Otherwise be sure to check out any cloth nappy deals, see if your local council, if you live in the UK, will offer you any sort of cloth nappy bundles because some of them will fund a certain amount of cloth nappies or a starter set so that could be a great option for you too. But I really hope this video was helpful to you guys and if it was please consider leaving a comment down below and also subscribing so you can keep up to date with new videos coming out and when I release the rest of this little mini series too. But thank you so much for watching everyone, do please subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye guys, have a great day.